Hello, friends. It is my favorite time of the week. Time for a recap and see how our predictions went. This is going to be part three of our spy predictions on how everything played out. So uh, again, luckily here, maybe not luck, maybe a little Maybe a little skill, we got a correct move, okay? So I'm gonna post the part two video uh, in this link <clears throat> in this description as well. This is gonna be part three, so check out part two. I'll give you a real tiny recap here of it. Um, uh, we did a prediction on the last two days. This is the day that we had the prediction on. So let's get into it. Now, I said a couple different things here and a couple different indicators to watch for as Yellen and Move came in. I alerted to my team that this was going to be a sell the news event uh, for sure after the Biden talks on the debt ceiling uh, would fail. And then after Yellen, we're going to pull back. Now, in this video, I explained the 30-30 standard deviation placements uh, on the last part, and we definitely need a pullback. I explained how the plus two deviation is a very big green line right here of resistance that we just do not stay above, right? So um, very, very, very rarely. Now, there's a lot of other catalysts that happened here that came true um, one day after. So uh, the two things I said is we can come out of the gate. We're going to either pop back into the gap, maybe go for a fill tag of a higher high. Very less likely. That was my least favorite play. My favorite play was going to be popping and dropping. We have a gold trend line right here, which was a very heavy resistance. A second attempt at that 421 gap for a no fill. And then we have the uh, deviation failure and RSI channel. So I talked a little bit about watching this RSI channel in the 3030. And I said, watch it break back down to the center and then down, okay, into the downtrended bottom channel. And that's something I said in the video and you can see pre-market today. What did it do? RSI broke back down right here. So we were looking for pop to shorts and a very, very easy roll. We were looking for absolutely no longs today, just staying short the whole time. In the video, I expressed highly that the 423 six fib that I have right here was a very good over under and a continuation down. And I would see continuation from that. And let's look at our triggers. <clears throat> so we have a cross to the rest of red, red oscillation, RSI to the downside and Matt Cross helping us out here as we've seen uh, for their downside. And we love using these three indicators, just helping us out. Let me delete these a little easier to see here. Scooch them up a minute here. So Mac helping us out probably the most. This is one of my favorite indicators. It's a standard Mac, no edits, no nothing needed. And uh, we did get across to the bear side, oscillation on TTM right as we're coming into that 50. And that's right at that open as well for the day. So uh, then we said we were going to roll all the way back down. We'd have a chance to come back down to the 2618 and then the 1618. And that is from the prior because when a Fibonacci extension, we'll go back here to where they are um, <clears throat> off these 30s right here, we had a very interesting set of 30, 30 candles right here uh, at the open of 517. And these are what I fibbed out for a continuation play up. And when those uh, fib plays came up into max resistance, including the gap tag no fill, which we had right here in this green section. Um, anything back under that 423 will retrace to the prior Fibonacci retracement points. So all we had to do is wait for a confirmational breakdown of the 423.6 and then continuation down. Now, um, we had a really nice panic and continuation from all of our indicators showing the oscillation to the downside and uh, our pop to drop play. And again, that's what we went over the video. So um, what's next, right? We're predicting this stuff uh, quite accurately so far. Now we are back under an anchor that I have. You see it listed right here. It says all time high anchor right around 416.50 or so. Uh, that's gonna be an interesting point to pop off the 10 and potentially continue down here. Now we have, um, Still downside enabled here all the way back down to usually the 100 fib, maybe the 50 SMA daily longer, way longer um, out there right now. So we're going to do some fibs to the downside now, and we're going to keep our upside ones on because we have our target. So again, just for a tiny recap, I want to get this very seeable. So 423.6 here. Okay. Once that failed, once we broke down, we were going to magnet 2618 target short. T1, target two, 1618, here, okay? Both of those levels wash, and you can see right where the interest points were. There was a little bit of back and forth here, and a perfect bottom called on the market for 1618. Those were our uh, target points down by 
<clears throat> excuse me, 1618. Uh, if we go to our other charts that we watched weekly uh, Fibonacci on as well, we had uh, 7860 uh, being a target. And then I also had a another back to the same Fibonacci's, but these weeklies are a little different. Uh, we had an opportunity to come back down to the 78.6 right here and start consolidating there. So from here on out, what do we do, right? How do we find um, the next pop to drop or continuation play? Well, will these Fibonacci stay on to the upside so I can see where the 100 Fib comes in, okay? So the target of the quicker time frame 30 is gonna be 4.12.40. Uh, our bottom was like 4.14.70s. I didn't see it too much lower than that. Uh, and it broke down another, uh, just about point. <clears throat> Uh, but we did get a 60 point short call uh, on it. So plus minus 10 at the end, there's not a bad deal. So for the remainder now, it becomes the 7860 fib over under from the weekly. Okay, 414.72. And what we do for a hidden Fibonacci system here is I'm going to grab that weekly. I'm going to push it up to the next Fibonacci range. I'm going to fib out the in, in, internal Fibonacci from the 100 fib to the 7860, which I call this a hidden Fibonacci system. If this holds the 10, pushes back up and gets a uh, likelihood back towards a 2618 like this, even the 50 retrace and wants to chop a little bit and then head back down, you'll be targeting the opposite lower ranges of the 1618 being 41316 and inevitably all the way back down to this weekly 50 again. And that's going to be a channel around 410. Now, that's for the rest, rest of the week. If the short play does continue, if you don't get outside catalyst, we have a ton of news. So I'm not going to make any hardcore predictions this time uh, on the video. Uh, as we were so accurate in the last six days, I don't want to, because we had really easy setups uh, for extremes on the deviations, as I explained in the last part. Please check that out. Um, but as far as uh, coming up here on news, we have a, a, a big bundle starting tomorrow. So we have the Yellen Speaks. Um, not having to do with the banks. She's going to be on at 9.05 Central. And uh, that's going to be a big one for tomorrow. The FOMC minute starts and then a metric ton GDP jobless claims Thursday, so on and so forth. And a little bit on Friday still with the uh, PCE. Now, uh, that's a crap load of data for the end there. Now, jobs are going to be one of the biggest points of interest there because, you know, hard landing, rising unemployment, uh, equal recession. We're going to have to see what those job numbers uh, equate to. But that's about the only thing I'm waiting for. Now, as far as technical, okay, because we, we just ran technical very, very heavy right here. We had a really good lower high. We had the setup all the way down. We're back down to the regression trend, which is the center, the white line of the standard deviation. Remember our plus one here, uh, plus two way up here. Now we got our minus one and minus two here. So you see they're very far away. Now the center is usually a pretty good bounce point. So I would say maybe a temporary chop long back up see if we can't find some resolution of over under right near 415.70 to 416. That's going to be the 50 fit with 38.20. And then per, uh, 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 wait for the moving averages to catch back up and produce resistance. So if we bounce around here, back up towards 416, 470 for the day, does this moving averages catch up for the next two days? We dwindle all the way back down to 413 by the end of the week or the 618 fib. That is my call by the end of the week. So I'm looking for 41275. Um, best case, lower extension, even further than that's going to be down here at 411, just about 50. If you look right here, that's the 50 right here, weekly Fibonacci. So, um, we're gonna need, nothing goes in a straight line. And this was a pretty hard dump today, which we had seen coming. We called this one really easy, but this regression trend bounce can be a pain in the butt ski. So if this bounces back up here a little bit, goes to the 2618, 38.20, rolls back down, breaks this 78.60, that's when we go to the 412.75, breaks that, that's when we go to the 50%. So we are walking it down from 414.72, 412.75, 411.40. Okay, those are all the Fibonacci targets. We have a hidden Fibonacci here for entries. Anything continuing to break down under 416 with moving averages to catch up to confirm those weakness points. And now, like we said in the last video, the 3030, if we look here in the RSI, we are in the lower channel. So what do we look for when the 3030 goes over cool like this? We look for it to crawl out of its hole a little bit because nothing can go in a straight line. We are oversold, right? We are starting to cross on the Mac here a little bit after hours. Oscillation starting to subside. So what do we look for? A little bit of sideways for the indicators to reset, right? So the indicators will go flat and pop. Price action doesn't have to. Um, I would like price action to come with it, right? Come back up a little bit near the 416 and change. While the indicator on 3030 comes back up to its halfway point or close to 50, oscillation gives a little buy wave like this. So you'll get a small blue wave. 
here. RSI comes up to the zero point, messes around here, and also comes back down, all equating in the bounce for tomorrow to continue the roll back down to 412.75. Now, we have big catalysts, Yellen. So please, the, just because the technical outlook of what we look for can get disrupted by huge news. Obviously, Yellen, Powell, CPI, um, just so many data points, just in case that's uh, a curveball, don't just assume technical analysis plays out magically. Fear, hype, and greed in the news catalyst take precedent over all intraday indicators because they can just set algos on a riot with one little thing being said. We've seen that many times with Trump tweets, Russia news, you name it over the years, we've had so many hype, fear, and greed catalysts. So don't just stick to uh, uh, zoning in on that trade. Make sure you're versatile, you're open uh, uh, to interpretation, and just look for those levels confirmation intraday and make sure Yellen's on pace, the pullback's on pace, and we can start this pullback down uh, to go chase down a ton of gap fills that we have on SPY that we've been watching for quite some time. And these are way down here yet. Here we've only filled a one out of so many. We have two different ones lower, lower than this. But this little guy right here is the only one that filled. We have two others. Giant Daily is my biggest one right here, looking at close to 400. Um, <clears throat> the one above that still 408. So even attacking any one of those gaps to the downside uh, would be nice here. Last but not least, I do want to bring up the volatility index on the VIX. I said it was going to pop today for one reason and one reason alone. I should say multiple reasons, but we were gonna pop against resistance for the standard deviation to uptrend all because of this gold level test. Once this is tested, this is a gold level range that I've had on this trend line that it's only been touched two times in a matter of three years, okay? So when this trend line comes into play, the VIXI is not to be messed with. So we were already banking on that short as the SPY was coming into that extension of overpurchased on the 3030 standard deviation. Um, we are back above the gold level now in 1825. So let's say the VIX resets here, consolidates for a day, comes back down near 18, 1825, goes for the next push up. Great. We can continue that run. Market can continue down. Let's start hunting for the gaps. If we look at the daily here, <clears throat> we do have trend tests on the daily for trend lines that we do need to come about and play with. So are we above 18 bucks, pretty much the gold level and green trend here to push us back up to the next? Um, and that would be into the next green trend line here. We'll have to see what that looks like intraday when that comes in, but maybe 19 and some change. Uh, and that's fine. But one thing I did note today, even in this morning, when I covered this all in live in our class and our live trading, which we do, um, link is in the description if this is interesting to you guys, um, that the Precursors here, mainly the Mac, we were pulling away from each other here and creating a new oscillation rate for the VIX. We said this before open uh, today, and that did come true finally as the uh, indicators were telling us that we were getting that roll up. If we go to a little bit uh, a faster time frame, like a 30 30, uh, you can see the increasing oscillation wave here as well, and the 50 channel tag. So again, here, top channel held back up hot, good oscillation, big buy wave, small sell wave big buy wave, okay, oscillation, and zero line, MAC, and back up, okay? Three indicators working together, right? And when we stack catalysts like that, when there's three verse, none, and they're not conflicting, they're not showing divergence, they're all showing the same thing, probability is higher. So thanks for tuning in on part three, and hopefully you guys caught some of these moves because they were crisp. So we'll catch you on the next.